Dear friends and colleagues, I'm Michael Lee from Hong Kong. Welcome to the AICT Asia PCR 2020. I'm going to talk briefly on the latest evidence on cardiogenic shock management. Despite recent advances in interventional treatment as well as drug therapy, mortality of cardiogenic shock still stands high at about 50%. Recently, with the adoption of best practice protocols, it has been shown that we can achieve more than 70% survival in this group of AMI cardiogenic shock patients. In the National Cardiogenic Shock Initiative, they prospectively look at patients whether the impact of early mechanical circulatory support will affect the outcomes of this group of patients. And they have shown that uh, more than 70% survival with more than 90% native heart recovery in this group of omnius patients. What they have done is they try to recognize cardiogenic shock early. They try to achieve a door to support time of less than 90 minutes and confirm cardiogenic shock with either left, right heart characterization as well as echo findings. They will put in impellus CP support before the PCI procedure. And after the procedure, they will perform another right heart characterization try to see if they can actually titrate down the pressure support, or on the other hand, if the support is not enough, they need to escalate the LV support, or if they are LV failure, they need to provide LV support as well. Cardiogenic shock is very time sensitive. If you compare the onset to impeller support time of more than four hours to less than one hour, you will see about two times increase in mortality. In the recently presented Recover 3 study, he has also shown similar findings of if we can provide earlier shock recognition and initiation of impeller support, less use of inotropic and vasopressors, a more pre-PCI impeller and more complete revascularization, and then a subsequent more use of the right heart characterization to guide our subsequent therapy, they can actually shown to have lower incidence of adverse events and much better survival rate as compared if we use the impeller device after the PCI procedure. In Asia, our Japanese colleagues has adopted similar best practice protocols by implanting impeller support early for this group of cardiogenic shock patients. And they have also shown to achieve a more than 70% or more, more than 80% survival rate in this group of not only AMI cardiogenic shock patients, but also other causes of cardiogenic shock, including myocarditis. In the German Italian registry, again, they show that by early initiation of impeller support and a more complete revascularization, achieving a residual syntax score of less than or equal to eight, patients will have a much better outcome. And the best outcome will be provided by early initiation of impeller support and more complete revascularization. In our hospital, we have been using more and more of these impeller mechanical support devices for our cardiogenic shock patients. We are not there yet, but by adopting similar best practice protocol, we are also aiming to achieve more than 70% survival in this group of six patients. So in summary, if we can adopt best practice protocol to identify and support cardiogenic shock patients early, aggressive down titration of these inotropic agents and identify inadequate LV support early and try to escalate the support early, as well as identify LV dysfunction as well, uh, again, early and provide adequate support, as well as more systematic use of right heart characterization to guide our subsequent therapy. Hopefully, we can all achieve more than 70% survival in this group of very sick cardiogenic shock patients. Thank you for your attention. Yeah.